Good afternoon, folks. Ted Ralston here, downtown Honolulu. <clears throat> also, uh, part of our studio has been moved to Waimanalo, as you can see. And we're the show, where the drone leads, which we do once a week here in, uh, at Think Tech Hawaii. Our guest today, Kano Jimenez. Not the first time on the show, right? Uh, Not, yeah, no. I think I've seen you before here, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Michael Morris. Okay. Yeah. And you guys are here for part two <coughs> of where the drone leads up to Mal uh, Pololo. Because we ran out of time last week talking about this great activity up in Pololo that you guys just ran last week. And in fact, we're probably going to run out of time today, too. So we're probably going to have to have you on uh, a few more times to get to the bottom of this, right? Yeah, that's no problem. Of course. Okay. And we do need to get the engineering side of this thing. I'll tell you more about that later as we, as we go <laughs> forward. I can't, uh, so happy that you're here as part of the team because we, too much of our time is spent in the Lego com component, where things have already been designed, we're putting them together. And what we're going to see in the future is a lot more attention to the engineering aspects, which are going to have to come into the picture here to make drones that we know of today really survive and be useful in the future. Yes. So anyway, it's great to have you here. But let's Thanks. go back a little bit, uh, Micah, to the uh, event up at Anui Nui Immersion School in Pololo. Yes. Describe that. Yeah, so we are now officially on day two of six um, for our six-week program. We just finished our first video we edited everything that the students done out at Pololo at Kikuku. So if I can Kano, interject, Kano, Kano, Kano. you're yes. saying a six day program one day a week is how this is structured? Yes. yes. So it says six week is like half a semester or something like that or a third of a semester something like that? Similar but, um, yeah, yeah. Half, about half. You get them once one on Fridays? On Fridays right? from 1230 so in the afternoon right after lunch and uh, usually that's a perfect time for weather. Um, of course we're in Hawaii so it's it's winter time so it was on um, for day two this week we got to go inside and we we're working inside using our simulators um, using Freerider and uh, demonstrating or showing the students how to balance props so let's go take a look at, at what this this demonstration last Friday looked like let's, let's We've seen what a drone can do up in Pololo in pretty strong winds sometimes up there and uh, sometimes in the rain and such but you guys went out there and put this program together with a Nui Nui. That was day one of a six-day program. That was our day one. <laughs> day one right there. It looks pretty cool doesn't it? All compressed into one minute thanks to Zuri our video editor and uh, uh, everything else person here at the, at the studio. But uh, that's just that video alone shows you an incredible new insight and, and I'm sure to the people in the school. I'm sure that's a view they've never seen of their own school. Can you imagine after a rainstorm or some serious type of storm, right. reflying re it and observing where the water's accumulating, which got to go treat the mosquitoes, or where there's albizia down or something like that, mud accumulating. So just in that one quick snapshot, you see a whole new world, a whole new way to observe and express something. I interrupted your flow on how this is all going, but that was just day one. <laughs> so what is day two going to hold for us, and day three, four, and five, and six? Yep, so day two we're working on um, balancing props. Um, Kainoa was able to teach the students how exactly you use um, balancing props, you know, having that engineering perspective, right, and yes. explaining to them what was important about the airfoil and, you know, the airflow for each aircraft 
that when it goes up in the air, you know, you want to be able to handle, um, uh, eliminate vibrations in the aircraft. But more importantly, it's all about operations. It's real basic, simple, finding out the, the ways of you to operate in a safe manner. And using the simulators, <laughs> it's a lot more different, but it's cost efficient, right? You're not going to be <laughs> damaging anything or um, ruining props. Um, <laughs> thank you, Think Tech Hawaii, for letting us you know, demonstrate our video. Uh, this this is the equipment that we use, and in the in the long run, like we said, you know, handling um, disasters or dealing with, uh, say, we have a flash flood, flash flood, we'll be ready to. We will have a flash flood. It, yeah. It's not a question about that, oh, right? Definitely. I so mean, when? <laughs> so let's let's take that on for thought. We got a flash flood. Um, the, it's unreasonable for the school to expect somebody to show up with equipment so that we really have to position, pre-position the equipment and the training yes. at the school with these students or their teachers and so that they can take care of that themselves. Now, has, have we thought about that? I mean, that's, that's such a value to the school, I would think. Absolutely. So. Um, that's why it was so important for us to start this program with um, the school. You know, they were interested in operations, these two students, um, Kauhi and Kaili, and Kaimi, the three students, they they were interested but didn't know what exactly they're gonna do with it yet. So we we're like, okay, we'll show you the fundamentals, we'll show you the basics, how to operate, take off, you know. And um, in the long run, you have all these projects that you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to figure out how to understand your ahupua or your land division. What happens at the top of the mountain down to the ocean? What is that water flow doing and how is it going to involve in the ecosystem? How is it going to plant your lo'i or your kalo or your taro? Open, always thinking outside of the box is what we're always striving for. And there's another place where the engineering and the STEM aspects can come in. Once you have the video or stills or a photo mosaic, or whatever it may be, of the area, you can now calculate things that you otherwise have to estimate, areas, for example. You could look at accumulation of water. You could look at uh, a d digital elevation model or some other way to depict the, uh, the slope of the land and such, and even calculate uh, water penetration and uh, potential for landslides and such. Uh, no, and that one video just opens your complete, it changes everything about your perspective. It opens a whole door, as you say, out of the box, like way out of the box. <laughs> so I can see that video being shown to the school administration, if they haven't already seen it, mm -hmm. over and over again. I can see it being shown to uh, the Parent Teachers Association or whatever the, the, the uh, family community support group up at Pololo is. Yes. And, uh, and as we said last time, let's come up with a, uh, a mission, a task, that would value that the school would value or that the local neighborhood would value and turn that into a project that the school can prosecute and go make happen oh i love that idea okay <laughs> so, idea. Yeah. Write that down. <laughs> and at the same time never forget the fact that there's the engineering aspects that we need to think about that i like the way you're thinking about the uh, prop vibration you could actually put a, a prop that has some damage on it yes. you could Put it on. You could actually exhibit what what vibration looks like. You could you could have the training of engineering features right there uh, for real. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is true for the imagery coming out of the camera and the, how that's treated and how the uh, trigonometric corrections are applied and this sort of thing to take slant out of it and to get it into a, a rectangular rep representation. So many things could be done, and it just takes one picture or one video to start that whole process. And instead of some of us who just talked, you guys went out there and did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, taking action is important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that, okay. And uh, so what, okay, we, day one was the actual field experiment. Day two was understanding some of the, the rudimentary aspects of what made that possible, which is you're leading them through any engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's days three, four, and five, and six have in store for us? Day three, we give you a little, um, That'll be next Friday, right? Right. Next week, Friday, we're striving for uh, its energy. We're looking at power source. Um, that's one main. We're striving to hopefully get a guest speaker um, on board and showing the kids how important energy is. And, you know, you have this aircraft. If you look at all aircraft times, um, 
lifespan in the air. You, you only maximum is what on average is like half an hour. And then you have the races is up to five minutes or uh, you have all these types of energy that you have to deal with. And um, that's the best time where Kainoa's perspective on um, engineering is understanding how important it is where the power um, distribution is going to be set in, in your aircraft. And as simple as a DJI to a complex drone that in the future they will build. And um, That is really interesting. You could, uh, I, I don't know the, the DJI uh, line that well, but conceivably you could take one and begin measuring things like certainly got the voltage uh, when the batteries are fresh. Yes. You got the voltage when the batteries are not fresh. That, that's straightforward. You got how much uh, power has been lost. You could compute that. You could even, uh, with the, in, the motors running at different RPMs, measure the current flow mm -hmm. and have a generate RPM versus current or some rudimentary engineering and, and begin getting people to see these things are connected, cause and effect. They're there. And not only are they there, somebody designed them to be there. Yes. And so there's a code running through somebody's head, the engineer who designed this stuff. And uh, understanding that, that that model, that code exists, and how that's used to generate systems, that is something that I would say 99% of the country does not understand. <laughs> but it's essential to future systems, and, and it's, it's essential to understanding how to make them work. And, and you kind of introduced the life cycle aspect here, how long these things are going to last in the field. You could do experiment. You could dunk this thing in salt water, see how long it lasts. I mean, there's all kinds of things you could do that, uh, that, yes. uh, that, that what you're doing uh, opens up that, that whole door. Yeah, it's very important to understand, you know, it's all simple. Within the six weeks, it's, it's very simple as to registration, you, you know, you, you're looking into um, familiarizing yourself with the controls, to what are you going to do when you take off, land, how... Let's just go back to that registration thing for a minute. That's an important it's subject. Very and if important. I can turn this, I think this is our camera over here that looks at, at pieces. So if we can just tip this guy up for a moment. Uh, if our camera can zero in here, uh, maybe it can't, but uh, oh. Uh, anyway, what we're talking about here is uh, the registration number, which is here on top of this uh, Phantom yeah. 2. Yes. Phantom 3. Phantom 3. And that's a really important issue. That means that you, who, who's ever listed as the owner of this drone, has been registered. The ownership is known that indication is put on here. Should there ever be something that gets away or is a problem, have a reference number, and uh, anybody can get into it. Law enforcement, should there be an issue there, or yes. the FAA, whatever it might be. But you've stood tall here and stood out and uh, taken on the action of Absolutely. getting it registered. We've got so many guys running without that that it's, uh, it's a great thing to promote and to have people understand. But let's get back to... Uh, uh, how this program might go forward, and we didn't talk about days uh, uh, four, five, and six yet. We'll catch them after the first break. Yes. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, ThinkTechHawaii.com. I appear on Mondays at three o'clock, and my gig is energy efficiency, doing more with less. It's the most cost-effective way that we in Hawaii are going to achieve 100% clean energy by the year 2045. I look forward to being with you. Aloha. It is once again the second half of our show Friday afternoon here on the 9th of February. I think back what you show where the drone leads. In this case, the drone leads back to Palolo Valley. And our Palolo Valley drone experts are here. Uh, Michael Motis, thanks again for coming on. Uh -huh. And Kanoa uh Jimenez. -huh. And uh, we were talking at the beginning of the show about this superb six-day program you've built up at uh, Anui Nui yes. School up in Palolo. And once again, it isn't 
just so everybody understands, this is not just a very, this is not a casual type of a event you've put together. You've got the administration in the school, you've got the neighbors around, you've got the teachers involved. So this is a, not an assertion you've put in here or an insertion. This is an inclusive program that, that correlates with other programs going on at Anduinui. Yes. And uh, so it's, uh, it, it is a, a well thought through, well done, and that's how programs should be done. And yeah. I compliment you on that. But again, again, we talked about flying day one, which is a, a day in the air. Day two today was a day in the lab. Yes. And uh, day three, four, five, and six. Day three, real simple. Everything that we're teaching, well, honestly, it has to be simple because we're translating everything in Hawaiian. If you make it real complicated, it's going to be like new Hawaiian words coming in, um, just like Kauhi when he announced um, Mikini Ho'olele Pa'ivikio was on an aircraft systems. It was, it was like a... That was on this show, wasn't it? Like was th about three weeks ago. On this show, right here, right. <laughs> so <laughs> keeping it simple enough for the students to translate and, and in the long run, you know, more leading to an advanced class. But... The six-day program, yeah, it's real simple. The, the first day is just registration, familiarizing yourself with the aircraft. Second day, you're doing the lab. You're just doing simulators. You're, you're understanding how to balance a prop. The, the third, the third um, day is you're going to understand the energy, the power source, the power distribution on the aircraft. And probably safety of LiPo batteries. That's going to be an important factor here as well. Oh, yeah. absolutely, yeah, right. So um, another one would be for the fourth day, we're looking at we have all recreational pilots are, are going to be joining AMA or, you know, it's free for the youth. We're showing them how to register and then showing them the benefits of drone racing. So introducing them to FPV. That by the fourth day, they'll be more comfortable at flying where they'll be able to operate, uh, especially flying manually and then you know, flying like a Cadillac and on GPS mode. We, just by the, by the way, we have a request from our audience here on to explain what FPV means. I think he may have made the transition to engineering where he speaks in algorithmic terms <laughs> as a, or acronyms as opposed to English. So tell us. Uh, FPV, uh, simply <coughs> enough, it just means first person view. And uh, that's exactly what we were doing today in the lab is you know, you're using a simulator and it's very similar to FPV or first person view. And by the fourth day, we're going to be using um, real life, you know, drones and using FPV for recreational purposes, giving them a, a nice um, obstacle course with <laughs> poo noodles. I mean, this is <laughs> good. <laughs> it's, it, it's, uh, for the fifth and sixth day, it's just repetition. It's always getting them down with the whole entire program. Um, like I said, it's real simple basic and they can lead into them for STEM, lead into all these projects that they want to acquire and, and conquer and it will just open more programs, more resources. That's the best thing about the drone community, I, I, I must say, is our resources, our engineers, our uh, politically, you know, or even um, all the entities, how we can, it's funny how we can all work together to push for community effort to solving issues in right now in Nanakuli in Palolo, which I mean for Waikiki, the outcome, right? We talked about it last week is this outcome of us working together for enhancing our, our future, you know, changing, challenging the status quo. And this is a great way for us to find out the issues, you, you know, you help and the perfect example, the video you showed at the beginning of the show, that alone opens up so many aspects of, of opportunity, observation, questions, problems in some people's minds, I'm sure, that uh, the discovery of what that outside the box is, is, is starts to occur when you show that. Without that, without that experience, without that video that you showed, it would be impossible to describe that to people. Let me go back to the... Uh, the, the question from our, our uh, audience on what FPV means. Again, what you what you uh, were referring to is the camera on board sends a, a, a signal, a video signal to the ground, shows yes. up on a ground controller with a picture that looks out the front or the side of the vehicle just as a pilot might see it. So in days gone by, we would have called that a pilot's view. 
but in today's arcane world of word creation, we call it first person view, as if the pilot is just a first person. It's not really a, a pilot, he's simply the first person, mm -hmm. the first person, the, the first uh, uh, receptor in the stream. And uh, it's, a, it's an important issue because um, certainly in, in piloting an aircraft, you are much, you're sensitive to the G-forces and the noise, the vibration, oh, the control absolutely. fields. Uh, and noises of the, of, the, of the propeller as the circumstances change, uh, uh, vibration of, uh, of the aircraft under when you're in a, in a, in a uh, buffeting condition and such. And those things are all absent in the, in the, in the drone world. So we're really working in an area where the perceptions that have built the entire understanding of the engineering community and the design community and the regulation community are absent in the, in the domain of FPV. So we'll have to discover what that is and how do we replace that sensation that's evident to a pilot in the, in the one dimension removed aspect of first person view. We don't have first person vibration. We don't have first person sound. No. Uh, they all would be required to combine together to create the picture in the mind of the operator to put it into a pilot perspective. So. Uh, that's the engineering challenge here, is to, in fact, a, a very important engineering challenge is to find how we can improve that connection between the guy on the ground with the ground controller yes, and, and, and the, the bird flying. It would be great to ask the kids. And I was impressed last week. They took, the, they, they took something that I spent a lot of time getting good at. They, they got good at it in 10 seconds. You know? <laughs> so, they so, both stated that exactly. they, it was easy yeah. to fly. Yeah, right. <laughs> and and you guys were close uh, behind that. But anyway, uh, um, if you ask them, what would you guys want as a way to operate this so that you don't have to stand there at a control station, but you could somehow say, drone, give me a map of the campus so that you can take care of whatever your duties are. And the thing goes off and runs the mission by itself, and then the yes. software downloads, and yeah, he's gone already. <laughs> okay, but that's what we have to get the kids thinking about. Where are those... What are those future requirements, and how would they play a role in, uh, in making that happen? But it starts with defining what that requirement is. And you know, that's, here I am talking all the time, but uh, <laughs> that's evident all over the place. Uh, we're working with the California Office of Emergency Services. They're thinking of uh, police and fire and public safety and this sort of thing, and they have the same question. What do we really want the system to do, and how do we write that down? And how do we get the manufacturers to address it? And the very issue of how do you control the thing? Right. Do you have to have a specialist with a box? Or can you have a generalist who simply opens the case and it flies out by itself? Your video showed that. It, it kind of implied that a little bit, right? The drone is sitting on the, on the hard case and it suddenly just elevates. What we don't see is that there's somebody out there running a control system to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we got to get the kids thinking about, ask them, what would you guys want this to do for you? and how simple would you want to make it? It would be interesting to see what they think. I love that question. That's and I see you brought yourself up. You brought a serious camera to the table here. Yeah, um, the reason for this camera was this um, demonstrating that this is, the, this is how simple our equipment are when it comes to doing um, video footage that you folks seen earlier. And we just use a Canon and a, and a Phantom and um, Pretty expensive equipment, I'm not gonna lie, but it's real simple to use. Uh, easier, easier said than done. And all the <laughs> students, right? All the students, the two students were able to use it and um, videotape and it, now it's just moving into a bigger question, right? And what exactly do you want to do with this? Mm -hmm. and, they, their minds, Kainoa was saying, uh, maybe you can elaborate on Kauhi. <clears throat> One of the students told me, Kauhi, was stating that why not build a drone that can fly and not only fly but do other things as well, like land and turn into an RC truck, and, for example, and then fly off. Or even dive into the ocean and turn into a miniature submarine and take pictures over there, you know what I mean? So he's already got his mind going, thinking all kinds of things. So he's thinking in terms of the utility and the mission Mm -hmm. that the system's going to uh, achieve uh, and uh, that immediately goes beyond what we can do today. He's, he's way outside the box in that thinking. But it would be cool to get him to think what the plan would be or the structured path. What would we, how would we get there? How would we start yes. on that path? 
what do we need to know in order to make the first step? Um, obviously, we don't want to go put this in the ocean. We know what's going to happen <laughs> to it. So there's a, a whole issue of saltwater intrusion becomes an immediate uh, task. But if, if that's exactly the thinking that needs to happen, because if we don't have that thinking, we're going to be stuck with what we've got today. Yes. Right. And, uh, that's, innovation. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just thinking the size of that uh, SLR you've got there, um, that's probably what, uh, two pounds maybe, something like that? Uh, yeah, no, like a maybe. Half pound, pound and a half. This thing, this would, uh, I know a lot of uh, quad rotors that would carry this just fine. Right. This one won't, I don't think. No, no. But, um, a little bit bigger. But that brings up another point, sensors and, and, the, and the software that analyzes the sensors. That's a real uh, forecastable, forecastably durable part of this business. That is, lasting, outlasting the drones and everything else is going to be the analysis of the information. <laughs> uh, we're just with UH today and uh, on a program they've got going. And what, what a camera is today, a digital camera, is it, it generates a cloud or a, a box, a whole bunch of, uh, of pixels. And the pixels are, covered, are colored red, green, or blue. And um, so it's just, it isn't a picture until our brain looks at it and turns it into something we recognize, or the software that the kids are going to come up with looks at those pixels and decides something. Puts it together. Yeah. In fact, what we should do is have the UH guys talk to your guys. That would be cool. We'll get a connection going between Anui Noe and UH. Yes. Because what we looked at today was they're taking the pixel set of a picture mm -hmm. and saying, hey, it's not a picture. It's just 24,000, 24 million pixels. Okay. Um, if there's a high affinity of the same color this in this in, a, in an area that that becomes a blob okay there may be something common about that that collection of of, uh, of, of pixels what if there's edges in there defined as uh, green and no green or something like that what if there's a sudden appearance of a definable shape wow. what if that edge closes on itself ah we've got a polygon we got a baseball home plate we got something uh, what if the shape was curved and but closed on itself we have a person no. Right. So, image extraction from the image from the collected uh, imagery is is a big deal. We'll, we'll do that. We'll get the UH guys to visit your guys, and and do a handshake and sh and show the kids what they're doing. Looks like and week six and oh week week five and six would be the ideal day that we bring in more guest speakers. The goal was to have at least operating some type of aircraft each day that is different. If you notice, you're going to operate a DJI or a different product, a different design, and they're all used for recreational because of educational purposes. And, and we've got so much more to talk about. We'll have to have you guys back because the show only runs half an hour, or we're going to have to get the boss to buy us for another half hour and make an <laughs> hour out of this show and get all this talked about. Uh, let's, let's continue talking. Let, let's look at this every week of your process and see what's coming out of it and what kind of things the kids are, are coming up with as you have already identified to them. Sounds great. Micah, thanks for coming on again. Thank you, Ted. Kainoa, we'll Thank see you, you guys when we're pleasure. back uh, at the end of the month. Look forward to it.